folks, it's Laura with Rain Tree Nursery. And today we have a beautiful pawpaw to show you. Pawpaw is Asamina triloba. This is the largest fruit that's native to the North American continent. This is a tree fruit. It kind of looks like a squat banana when it's ripe. And it tastes like the most heavenly combination of banana, mango, custard. Oh, it's rich and delicious and so tropical. It's, it's an extremely hardy plant because it is native to the east coast of the United States and up into Canada. And it grows in understory conditions, usually on stream sides. So it's rare to see one out in the sun like this, but because we're in the mild Pacific Northwest, they can grow out in full sun here. Now, as far as pollination goes on a pawpaw, they must have a pollination partner. So you can have two seedlings, which are gen genetically separate from one another, or you can have two different grafted varieties that are not the same. Those will cross pollinate as well. What's unusual about this plant, well, there's a lot that's unusual about this plant, but one of the coolest things I think is that it's actually pollinated by flies and beetles or carrion insects. And because these were found normally along streams, there were, a, there were a lot of rotting things in the water and it's those bugs that evolved with this plant to pollinate. So if you're not having a lot of um, swamp bugs in your, in, in your garden, you can take chicken necks or chicken feet or uh, some kind of little rotten meat and you can put that out here in your grove of pawpaws and that will help to ensure that you get good insect pollination. So as I said before, usually this is an understory plant. It is very sensitive to full sun in the first few years of its life. So either you plant it on the shady side of some other full grown plants if you live in the hotter climates, or here in the Pacific Northwest, you can plant the plant and then put like a little shade cloth tent over the top of it and remove that when it's not the hot part of the summer. That will help keep the leaves, which are terribly photosensitive, from burning. Um, once you get past year three or four, you don't usually have to shade them or protect them. They're usually strong enough to take full sun. Another unusual thing about pawpaw is they are very delicate when it comes to transplanting. So when you get your plant, you need to be very, very careful with it because it has a delicate taproot. You want to just put it into the ground, slide it out of the container. Don't move the roots at all to loosen them. Just set them in very gently backfill and walk away slowly. So these are some of the later fruits to ripen in the garden. Once you get past the full summer sun into the beginning of fall is when you want to start looking for your ripe fruit. Pawpaw is not the kind of plant that you want to grow in a pot. They tend to not like to be pruned and they can grow to be quite large trees, anywhere from 12 to 25 feet tall when mature. No pot's gonna hold that. Also, they have a very delicate and aggressive tap root. So they, a pot will not tolerate that either. So not one that you wanna grow in a pot. Now, when it comes to insect and disease, they're pretty hardy plants. The one thing that you need to watch out for, especially when they're young, are slugs and snails. They tend to really go for the brand new leaves at just as they're emerging. It's not so prevalent when they're older like this, but you really have to watch slugs and snails when they're lils, little babies, yes. So when it comes to fertility, pawpaws do need a lot of really light, fluffy soil, a lot of organic matter to kind of mimic those stream side settings that you would find them in in nature. So when you're planting, definitely a, a third to a half of what you put back in the hole should be compost. And you should also have compost around the top of your planting hole. As with most trees, they need 10 gallons of water per week 
every week without fail during the warm parts of the year to make sure that they get established. Once they get past that young stage, then they're pretty water independent. And frankly, pawpaws are one of the perfect things to grow in a home garden because the fruit is so delicate. You hardly ever see them sold in stores. So one of the only times that you're actually gonna find them is if you can go out and wildcraft them or if you grow them in your home garden. And that's all for now. Bye folks, see you next time.